Hello. I'm very cold. My audio file's up. God damn it. There's a Christmas background for you. <laughs> this video's already off the rails. Anyway, so I asked my friend Amanda if she would like to participate in this video. And what we will be doing is we will be presenting PowerPoints to each other. Now, I decided to make mine somewhat Christmas themed, but also there is a catch. So there is one topic I want to talk about, and there are three that I don't want to talk about. There are three topics that I really, I just because I don't understand them, and I'm going to look like a big, big dummy. Also, I'm researching them and presenting them in the same day, and they're topics that you can't just learn in a day. We have the one I want to do, the hottest Santa adaptations, quantum mechanics and Christmas, multivariable calculus, and the holidays. And we have festive Laguer polynomials. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so let's just uh, pull one from this old thing. Okay, here we go. Please, please don't be. Oh god. Oh god damn it. Oh, I would like to welcome our guest here, Amanda. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm I'm Amanda, but you can call me Dr. Amanda, because I've been referred to a doctor once in the, actually no, three times in an email, because they kept sending the same email. So hi. <laughs> Hello, Professor. I want to give the people your presentation first here. I want to give the the great, I'm honestly, I'm really curious and I want to know what the hell it is. So we're going to start off with NFTs. This is my presentation because I'm a doctor. I have to put Dr. Hardman in the front. Um, you know, as any, as any good professional would, you have to have your credentials. I had to prove that you know what you're talking about because in this situation, I definitely know what I'm talking about. So there we go. So first off, what are NFTs? Well, NFTs, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the question right now. They stand for non-fungible tokens, right? NFT, non-fungible tokens. They could come in the form of art, videos, other computer files. Some people will uh, do like CAD program stuff, you know, other computery things, techie things. There's, there's a wide range of things that can be NFTs. That's the, the beauty of the NFT space. I'm already a little lost, I'll admit. Uh, I don't know what fungible means, if I'm being honest. Oh, well, do, no worries, no worries. We're going to answer that question in just one second here. I've thought of head. I've given this lecture uh, many a time before, oh. and that is one of the, the most important questions that comes up. So don't worry, we've got you covered. But before we go into what makes an NFT, we're going to go over two examples of famous NFTs. So we have here Bored Ape. That's okay. number one. Then we have Lazy Lion. Now, if you notice a bit of a, a pattern here, what, what, I'll, I'll pose the question to you. What kind of pattern do you notice with these NFTs? Uh, well, stylistically and also compositionally, they look exactly the same. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so NFTs, how do they work? That's the biggest question. Now, non-fungible means that an NFT is one of a kind. It's like a trading card. So you only get one. There's only one of its kind. Now, Jake Paul, he could do something like he auctions off different types of clips, but everyone is unique. So not each clip is going to be the same. Pokemon, sure, they, they make a million different trading cards, but NFTs... They're different. They're simply built different. They're unique. So the NFTs, they run on a, a blockchain network. So if you think of a bunch of squares and they're all chained together by individual chains, it's out in the forest somewhere. Um, that's that's actually how it runs. It's not like a computer thing. It's a physical thing um, where it's just a bunch of cubes tied together. And it just sits on there. So Legos? We're going to move on to the first slide of NFT rules. Now, this is going to go over um, some unspoken rules and some written rules um, that NFT owners and creators alike must keep in mind um, when they're looking to get into this crypto space. So the first one we're going to look at here, um, although it may seem like NFTs can only be owned by one person, I said it's like a trading card that only one person can have it at a time, which is actually true. Um, you can actually get it without paying for it. If you screenshot an NFT, um, you legally own it. Oh, 
Sweet. So I could just walk around and screenshot all of them. And then you legally own it. You become the new owner. Oh, I don't. Oh, pretty much. That's that's like the best loophole ever. Like, why why are people paying thousands of dollars when I can just click two buttons and do it? Like, what? <laughs> Exactly. Well, that's the problem is people don't know this. It's almost like a gatekeeping. They've girl boss too far. So they want to make sure that no one else can get in. So they don't share these things. But it it goes into the blockchain network that when you screenshot it, um, there's a little note that says, oopsies, uh, this person took it from you. And then the person who paid thousands of dollars for the NFT now no longer has anything to sell. Every NFT must look as boring as ugly as possible, like many rich people these days. Mark Zuckerberg, there's no pizzazz. And it's the same thing with the NFTs. If you make anything even remotely in interesting, you can actually be um, criminally charged. It's it's uh, a violation oh, against the law. That that would explain why they're all so fucking ugly. That, that would just- Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And it makes sense because you look at like the um the the dink doink by Logan Paul, or you look at the the lazy lion, the bored ape. They look disgusting, and it's because they're legally bound to make them look disgusting. That's how it works. Yeah, you know, if people if they were any more interesting, people might actually care. I think is is the thing. Well, exactly. Yeah. Okay. They're just a, 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 process, a thought process ahead of us. They know too much, and so to keep the regular people out. They want to make it seem like it's not interesting, but the crypto bros, who, who I will speak uh, about in a minute here, um, they want to make sure that they, they gatekeep as much as possible because they're too smart. They're too smart. So next point here. If it isn't a monkey or a poorly photoshopped image, um, you must bring your proposal for your NFT to the Council of Crypto Bros for approval. This one, again, kind of um, legally binding, except you haven't gotten into the NFT space. But if they do find that you've put out something that isn't the, the monkey or the poorly photoshopped image, um, you must go in for approval. If not, they will uh, uh, put a sanction against you and you may no longer be able to make NFTs or sell them in the future because they kind of control everything. The Council of the Crypto Bros. Interesting. Interesting. How do, how do I uh, get in contact with these, with these, uh, these crypto bros? You tweet um, on uh, Twitter, I don't understand crypto, and they just kind of go through the, the recent tweets. They just look up that sentence and they'll find you. Oh, no. And then they'll mansplain some stuff as well. Because oh, usually, I... it's it's dudes. It's dudes. It's, it's in the name, Crypto Bros. Yeah, of course. I mean, I love when I don't understand something and a, and a dude is like, hey, and they just explain it to me like I'm three. I, I love I love when that happens. Um it's like a bat signal, really, when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Except instead of Batman, it's just a, a insufferable asshole. <laughs> Aren't they both the same? I mean, yeah. <laughs> We're going back. We're going back. You, you will be shot on sight if you do break that contract um, of uh, not explaining crypto to everyone you meet and being just an absolute menace. That, man, he's just, I don't think I want to get into this business. This is... But think about the money. Think about the money. Oh, you're there's right. A lot of, there's a lot of coin tied up in there. Well, Ethereum, um, it, 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 in a sense. But uh, just, just saying, it's an option. I mean, death or, you know, funky little, funky little monkey. You know, that's, I don't know which is, uh, which I want to choose. <laughs> Personally, funky little monkey plus a loss in revenue because most of the time you lose money on these. Um, or, no, you didn't hear that from me. You didn't hear that from me. Oh, I didn't. I oh. said nothing. I said nothing. I NFTs nothing. are great. Invest by purchasing an NFT. You are obligated to a complimentary girlfriend, and if you do not receive that girlfriend, you become a misogynist. Specifically on Twitter, uh, that's the main one, like the women posting W's. You just go into the comments and just say that's not a real W or just some other degrading stuff. Yeah, L plus ratio plus uh, young young thugs better, you know? Exactly, okay. exactly. And I unfortunately, I do not make the rules here. This is the Council of the Crypto Bros. It is legally binding, um, all of these rules, it, it, in a sense. So, um, yeah, it just, it just sucks that if, if you invest in this and you don't agree to it, well, you're shot on sight, pretty much. Or to jail. Or both. Who's to say? Uh, yeah, I mean... 
they all just seem awful between getting shot, becoming a misogynist, or buying an NFT. I just, I don't know, uh, it, breaking the rules seems awful. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so high risk. Yes, but high reward. And on the next slide here, we talk about the environment and how they're actually helping the environment. So think about this, with your investment, you could actually um, help save the world in a way. So hear me out here. Many people have had concerns, you know, on Twitter, Facebook, wherever, um, about NFTs in the environment because it takes a lot of energy and a lot of resources to run Ethereum, which is like the, the blockchain, the big snake in the forest um, that they, they run these NFTs on. However, the Council of the Crypto Bros have seen this. They've seen the, the um, L plus ratio plus you fell off plus young boy better. Um, and they have decided, okay, we're going to do something about it. So what they have decided to do as a way to combat these concerns, um, they give one NFT to each woodland creature they kill uh, when they, you know, make up this this blockchain thing as a, a form of repayment. Um, just, you know, a little oopsies. Sorry you did that. Here's some money. Uh, just for you, even though the woodland creatures are dead. But don't look too far into that one there. Now, I, do when I, if I kill a creature, do I get to pick, pick which woodland animal I give this NFT to with the one I kill my NFT with? That is a good question. That is a very good question. I think that if you were to communicate with the Council of Crypto Bros, because when you do buy an NFT, this is something that they, they kind of hide in the fine print. By buying an NFT, you do kill one woodland creature per NFT. Um, if you were to communicate, let's say, with the Crypto Bros, I think there would be a way to, to maybe arrange that. Okay, good. Yeah, that, that's, that's my main concern. I want to know exactly which animal mm -hmm. I'm killing. So that's, that's good. That's good. No, exactly. Well, if you're killing off a rat, rats are kind of cute, but realistically, there's probably more of them. You're probably okay. Yeah, I want to kill like an elephant with my NFT, you know? I want to kill like an endangered species, like a rhino or like an eagle or something. You know, that's what I want, you know? You'll be making a difference. So with that being said, that's pretty much it. Um, and then if we go to my references here, there's none because I screenshotted all the NFTs that I used. Um, and now I am the proud owner of those NFTs. Congratulations. So there we go. Thank you. And you know what? You can do it just for yourself, too, with all of these t tips and tricks that you have learned. Um, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, you can make millions. That's all I'm saying. Thank thank God. I'm, I'm honestly, I, I'm afraid to screenshot personally because I don't, I don't want to get shot. And um, I also don't want to be a misogynist. Um, so... What? <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I know. It's a, it's a wild uh, <laughs> ideal. Well, think of it this way. You will not be alone with the misogynist because you have the entire council of crypto bros. They're your best friends. Of course. Oh, my gosh. They're great guys. Um, Rufus and John. <laughs> I don't know. It's just all business students, so yeah. you have tons to pick from. <laughs> Yay. Oh, my gosh. I... Wow. Talk about uh, <laughs> informative. <laughs> you are welcome. That is my gift of knowledge to you. <laughs> wow. I thank you. I the gift of knowledge is a great thing. You know, this is this is sort of uh, this event is all about giving. And I'm, I'm a little bit smarter. I understand NFTs. I understand they're fantastic for the environment because they kill smelly animals. Mm -hmm. They kill those stinky, <laughs> smelly animals that we don't want in their homes. And I don't have to pay for yes. that. But... It's, and you can make money off it too. And you get a bunch of new friends. Yeah, I get a bunch of people that uh, I probably shouldn't be friends with, but I get a bunch of friends. I get my presentation pulled up here. Uh, let me make sure I'm still recording. I'm very excited. Um, all right. Perfect. Oh my gosh, polynomials. Festive hey, Laguerre polynomials. Perfect. So this PowerPoint oh is about festive Laguerre polynomials. We are going back to Calculus 3. <laughs> no. I almost failed out of Calculus. 
Well, I, I've never taken Calculus, so let's just let's just go through. So in this PowerPoint, we are going to discuss mm -hmm. uh, Laguerre polynomials. What are they? How are they used? The creator of this mathematical formula, Edmund Laguerre, who is he? And how are these things related to Christmas? What are Laguerre polynomials? Uh, they are created by Edmund Laguerre, and they are solutions of Laguerre's yeah. equation, which is second which is a second order linear differential equation or as i like to say oh <laughs> <laughs> now edmund laguerre he was born between 1834 and 1886 he is a french mathematician from bar the duc pardon my french if i pronounce that incorrectly of course he's a frenchman yeah. of course of course <laughs> so now let's break down sort of what exactly is the Laguerre polynomial. Now let's begin with, uh, we have a really excited natural number here. And then we have like this like loser natural number. And those are like multiplying to each other. And then we have, uh, there's X. And then also these are divided by like this one. So there's this alpha that is exactly one higher than everything else. So that all that is divided to equal one less than a natural sigma. Now, as we can see, sigma male. The sigma, yes, the sigma male. We now know that the alpha, that is the, the thing above the alpha by one is actually less than one less than the sigma. Right? This hurts. <laughs> I'm about to start crying. So I don't like this. I don't like the flashbacks. <laughs> but um let's see. So the sigma and then <laughs> loses its sigma status. And then we oh this is God. where the, the formula gets a little complicated here. So the alpha, so you have the the other alpha that's J on the top, and then you have the alpha plus the alpha sigma which you cut divide that in half and that makes the child of both of these and then we have some words of encouragement halfway through the equation it just says nice job um and then this part is really really important you you have to understand you it, understand this part of the equation that don't trust okay. this part the loser <laughs> natural number is not secretly the negative version of the of the alpha child so then we have another x okay so hold on here hold on so the alpha sigma. Now, my question is here: Does this tie into the omega verse at all, with like the alpha omega partnerships? Yes. Or is this a completely different thing? This this is like alpha sigma, all that stuff. This all ties into it. This is the mathematical equation to that. Perfect. Okay. It makes so much more sense now. I don't need to cry anymore. It makes sense. Can, Perfect. Can, can, lay it on me. Lay the next step on me. Okay, I'm so ready to go. We have a plot twist. Oh, excuse me. I minimize you. We have a plot twist. The X variable we've been oh. pointing out is actually the mother of the half alpha J. No. I know. How deceiving. And oh my gosh. she is teaming up with the loser natural number to defeat her child, the lesser alpha sigma j minus one. You're kidding. I know. No. This, we get all of this from a formula. This is crazy. And then Jeez. All, all of this culminates into this huge epic war here you see at the bottom. Jeez, it's the only way it was going to go. When you think about it, it was the only the only natural way. It was the only way this could have happened. How exactly the Gare polynomials in Christmas can relate? So, number one, uh, I made both of their texts on this slide blue. So there's one. There's, True. there's one. True. Number two, the Gare is French. Christmas can be celebrated in France. If you were to give math a color, it would be red. Or green. Blue. It's it's always it's blue. Red. <laughs> fine, fine. I'll let you're the professor here. You're you have the PhD. I will let you. You're you're right. Yeah, How can I, I argue? Excuse you. How dare you? <laughs> My deepest apologies from one professor to another. <laughs> so Christmas is it, that is also the color of Christmas, which is red. And finally, mm -hmm. 
Uh, because I said so. That's... So... It makes so much more sense. Totally. I see it. Yeah. So now we have... I'm going to show some more examples. So I found this picture of Santa doing math. So that means... That must, like, mean something, I, I think. Here's some more evidence of Santa who understands basic conceptual math like calculus... Um, which is which makes it Christmas related. However, if you look at these bottom two images here, obviously one plus one does not equal three. And if we were to give ho a value, it would be one considering ho, ho, ho. So ho cubed would not be ho, ho, ho. It would just be ho. There's no bracket. So it would just be o to the power of three. So it would just be ho. Yeah. And it just sounds like you're in the club and you saw you saw someone you'd like. Oh! That's like Brian, you know? Why is Santa so, so adamant about showing him with math, but yet he's always wrong with the math he's showing? Is it because the French are wrong? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. So how is Santa able to understand these basic, and he's unable to understand these basic concepts like addition exponents but he is an entity that can travel at the speed of light so is he lucky and just just a big dummy or is he trying to fool somebody fool humanity oh my gosh how do these two relate we're going back to this equation if you look at this equation, you might notice one particular variable that stands out a bunch. Uh, will, will you, uh, what, what variable do you think it might be? Just because, just, just because. Sigma. sigma? I'm going to say sigma. Close. Or no, x, because x is a variable, right? Sigma isn't a variable. x is a variable. Is it x? If you look at it, you'll I notice j is on the is in the equation a whole bunch everyone knows that santa is jolly and j equals one one is the first numerical point in which all things become whole thus jolliness must be the first thing oh my god but we're not done yet would that make santa the first being god the first thing in existence to become whole who is considered to be a kind of benevolent entity i.e jolly but how does Edmund Laguerre fit into all of this? What hints could he be dropping for someone to eventually figure it out? Did you know that he has a middle name? Care to guess what his middle I, name I might assumed, be? I assumed, but I never thought about it. Care to guess what his middle name might be? I'm going to say his middle name. Just We're just going here. I'm going to say it is Santa. Nicholas. Oh my god! Edmund oh my god! Laguerre's middle name is Nicholas. Oh my gosh! And Wikipedia says it too! Wikipedia yeah. is never wrong! Oh my god! And they got it everything right there! Look at that! Jeez! Sorry, I just threw my lampshade. <laughs> <laughs> I had to it's take okay. It. it is okay to be excited about this. This is important. This is These are important revelations here. I'd be doing the same too. This is important. I'm throwing the lampshade across. Actually, I'm not. It's very <laughs> fragile. I don't, I don't want to break it. So, if you take a look here, notice the facial hair. The Santa-like glasses. He's wearing a Santa hat. Why would an 1800th mathematician want to leave hints to teach humanity directly without revealing himself as God? Simple. Hmm. Laguerre polynomials are often used for quantum mechanics dealing in space. Meaning, gods are not born, they are made. Santa Claus is one of those gods and is trying to guide us to ascend into the same place as him with the formulas him and his people created. Oh my god! I need a minute here. I need a minute to just take this all in. Holy crap. So is this to say that the French are holier than thou? Is yes. that what we're saying? Is is everyone talks about like, I don't know, other places of being the holy land. Is it France? It is That's France. where they have the Eiffel Tower. It's to get closer to God. Exactly. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I called it. French are deities. <laughs> 
Jesus was French. In <laughs> closing, math is hard. Yes. Santa is God. God is math. Santa is hard. <laughs> Have you confirmed that one for yourself? Or... Yes. <laughs> Ooh, All right. I, need to I know you need a moment. This, this is a great discovery that I have just now unraveled. I'm so shocked. I never in a million years would I, because I've been so confused with my art. Confused. Oh, I'm so shocked. I can't even speak. I've been so consumed with my my birds are real theory. I've been thinking too small. This this is it. This is it. Santa is God and French. Something I didn't expect to learn today, but I, I really do appreciate you bringing the, the, the truth to all of us because this is something that we all need to know. You know, this it, it's been hiding in plain sight for so long. Exactly. Every they thought they could hide the Laguerre polynomial from me. Well. <laughs> PhD and expert. That's right. Anyway, Amanda, thanks for being a part of this video. <laughs> Thank you for including me. I hope my, my PhD went to use today. It, it did. I learned a lot about NFTs. Frankly, I actually learned more about them than, like, bit aside, I learned more about them than I already knew. <laughs> like, that is so sad, just on my part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a new that's a new record for me. That's Ooh. that's something I'm gonna put up on my mantle. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, 